Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. It's with my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to do the Padded Rim. This is a cat nap bed. So I made this for my cats and uh, I have a bit of a story here for you and then we're going to get going on. So just fast forward if you don't want to hear a story. So the two cats that we have were rescued from the SPCA and what we did is that we just uh, grabbed these two. They were not related to each other but we put them side by side and realized that they get along. So we noticed with these uh, two cats is that we had one uh, pet bed that you see just off here and this is from the stitch long from the Joanne stitch long of, of September 2018 and that we just folded down the interior of the basket and then suddenly it was an instant pet bed. The problem is that we had two cats. So they were always switching off with each other and what we realized is that these cats love these beds and I think it's because they were in the cages for several months that these uh, pet beds or blankets that were inside their cages became their safe spot. So what I decided to do is create a secondary uh, pet bed and design it as I go. This is what it looks like without the cat on it and it's been patterned on the outside because I noticed that with the other one they like to put their head on the rim of the bed so that their head is slightly up. So what I wanted to do is create a pet bed that suited their needs from what I can see from behavior and then create something that is keeps them off the floor with a bit of stuffing in the bottom section and then inflate the outside here with a lot of stuffing in order to keep their head up. So let me show you my example. So here's an example of the bed. It is 18 inches wide and it has a, a sunken in area. The outside has been inflated with um, stuffing here to keep it up so that their heads can rescue, uh, rest. I can see an indentation here. They're probably, when it's turned, they're probably always putting their chin here and lying down. So we just put a little bit of stuffing in the middle so that it keeps them uh, secure from the floor and then I notice that they like to put their paws and stuff inside this creasing area and then uh, just kind of relax. So what I'm gonna do to, for you is I'm gonna you a miniature example. This is just made up of two pieces. I'm also gonna show you a tip that I never talked about in the pattern itself but if you're watching the video I can save you some sewing uh, techniques as well uh, in the one section just by watching today's tutorial. So what this is is actually consisting of two pieces. So let's talk a little bit about that. The bed actually consists of two pieces. So what, what you see up here is that what this is is just a round circle and then we build up the sides straight up like a basket. Then what I've done is that I created a secondary just the middle pad inside and when I put it in there I put some stuffing in between so that the pads are between each other with some stuffing in between. Once you get to the nine inches tall you're going to fold down the top layer and you're going to stuff around the interior of the frame and then just sew this position in and then that's what you end up with. So what I need to do for you today is that I'm going to get you started and it's gonna be a quite an easy pattern. I'm gonna just do a miniature on screen with you. This is almost a beginner level project really but uh, I'm gonna definitely say it's easy. So let's begin today. So in the pattern it shows that the inside bottom pad is the second thing to do. I would actually make it the first thing to do if you were, if I were you and you were me. I wrote it that way because the bottom and the sides is easier to write in that order. So what I would do if I were you and you were me I would do rounds one through seven just like you see this is not through one through seven. This is only one, two, three and then what you want to do is then just fasten off and put it aside. Then what I would uh, get you to do then at this point is that I would do the second one and we start over but we would continue but then when we come to round number eight we're gonna put the two sides together so that we don't have to sew these together and we'll put some light stuffing in there. So let me show you how to grow a circle to make sure that you understand it and again this is a miniature version that you're seeing on camera today. What I decided to use in my particular blanket is the Bernat Home Bundle and uh, this yarn is in and around. You'll find this probably at Walmart and Joann's for sure and it has a mix of different things. I thought the cats would really enjoy the texture and they seem not to mind it so um, I provided that and also because their pet hair does collect um, it hides out a lot better if you choose the right colors that matches your pet hair instead of having something so obvious. So I'm going to just substitute today. I'm using a, a Bernat Softy Chunky with an eight millimeter hook. I'd recommend a 10 millimeter hook. You can also substitute with 10 millimeter hook size N with Bernat blanket itself is if you would like to do that. So let's start off with our beginning and let's begin. So let's create a slip knot to begin and I need you to chain four. Insert your hook and it is a 10 millimeter size N crochet hook with Bernat home bundle or Bernat blanket. Remember I am substituting with an eight millimeter size L and using Bernat softy chunky for demonstration purposes. I'm gonna chain four. So one, two, three, four. This counts as your first post going around the circle. So just wrap in the hook and go back to the fourth one which is the beginning chain and put in a double crochet. I want you to include the, the chain you just skipped as a double crochet. So one, two, 
you have two on there and I want you to get a total of 12. So let's start counting these out. So we're gonna say this is three. Go right up over top of the straggler, catch it underneath. This is four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven and 12 and just to make sure that you stay in sync just double count that to make sure. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12. Slip stitch to the very beginning and that's good. Let's move on to round number two. So round number two we're going to chain three and in the same space our stitch that you just uh, slip stitch to put another double crochet. And in round number two every stitch is each going to get two double crochets so that it will grow out and stay flat. So for round two, two double crochet in each. I'll see at the end of this round. So at the end of round number two, it's still two double crochet in each and then you're gonna finish off. So there will be 12 groups of two. Remember this one over here is part of the first one. That's not a stitch even though it looks like it but it's not. So just slip stitch to the top. So each one of the rounds now three all the way to um, seven is going to be the same kind of growth. So how we're gonna start, so let's start round number three. So we're gonna chain up three, counts as a double crochet and double crochet in the same one. So this time the next one is one double crochet by itself and then the next one has two in it. So do you see that those one by itself helps it to separate out so that it still remains flat. So then the next one is one and then the next one has two. Please do that all the way for round number three. I'm going to explain some things at the end of that one and then we'll continue on from that point. So at the end of the round number three you're just going to join. So let's go back to the set of instructions and let's review where we are. And I'm going to have you then carry on by yourself then to get all the way to round number seven. So what you're going to notice is that when you start the next uh, round number four is that you double crochet in the same one. So chain up three, double crochet in the same one and then the next two uh, stitches are one double crochet each. So double crochet in the next two stitches. Then two double crochets in the next. So what happens is, is that before we were doing one double crochet by itself and then two. This time it's two double or one double crochet in two stitches and then two. Then as you continue into number five it's then uh, chain up three double crochet in the same one and then there's three double crochets by themselves and then two. And then round number six there's four double crochets by itself and then Finally to number five you'll end up with five double crochets by itself. So it incrementally grows out. So what I'm gonna show you is a tip. So at the end of round number seven if this is your first time through fasten off at the end of number seven and what I wanna show you then is that I wanna show you that if you come the second time with your second panel I'm gonna show you how to join them together. Add some stuffing so that you can avoid sewing at this particular moment. So get to, to round number seven done. Fasten off and then do one through seven once again and then meet me back here in just a moment. So on screen I remember I'm doing miniature. So I have already the one done. So say this is one through seven done. This is only one through three but if it was one, one through seven. The second time around I got one through seven done again but I have not fastened off. So what I wanna do is turn this so that the right side is facing down. So this is the good side. Face it down so that it stays on the outside. And what I want to do is that I wanna just start matching the stitches to each other. So in order to do that I'm going to chain up one. So this is round number eight. This is what I'd recommend other than sewing and come into the same one and then just go directly over to the one in the behind and put them together as a single crochet. Okay so advance to the next one. Notice that I have not put any stuffing in between yet. I'm going to wait so that I can um, get closer so it becomes more like a pocket because it'll just fall out at this moment. And I'm matching stitch to stitch and so I'm avoiding having to sew these together. If you prefer not to use stuffing then don't use any stuffing. That's your call. You're the artist. You can decide what's right for your pet. Um, I find a little bit of stuffing goes a long way and just to help to keep the cat insulated from the floor. And if you'd like to use this for dogs you can do so pr pretty much too. Um, the advantage to making your own like this is that you can toss it in the washing machine and dryer and etc. at the end of your project. So the goal is is that we are going to stuff this 
right, just to keep in line with my instructions. And the reason why I wanna stuff it is that I wanna just provide a little bit of cushion uh, for the middle. So as I get about halfway around, I'm just going to apply a bit of stuffing. Don't go crazy with the stuffing because it'll make the center pop up like a mountain. So you want it just to be firm enough. So nothing crazy. And then continue all the way around and you'll have a bit of a stuffed um, pocket for your pet. So continue to single crochet all the way around and meet me back here in just a moment. So let's carry on in the instructions. So round number nine all the way for nine inches tall. So it'll be nine inches from this spot. It will be just a half double crochet. But what I want you to do is that I don't want you to have any slip stitching involved. So starting in the first single crochet I want you to begin to do a half double crochet all the way around. So when you get back to this spot here you're just gonna go right up over top of it and then we are just gonna go in a continuous round up until nine inches tall. That's what I determined that that'll take you about a four inch height that you'll find at the end. So if you want an even deeper basket do ten inches or maybe even twelve, fourteen. You can decide what's right for your pet. So what I want you to do is do in a continuous round now half double crochets until you get to the desired height. I'm gonna just, because this is a miniature, I'm only gonna do a small version and then I'll see you back here in, and after the first re revolution to make sure that you are going in a continuous circle. I'll see you there in a moment. So once you get what appears to be all the way around, you just continually go right up over top and continue in a round. So what my goal is, is at the very end when you're finally done, the last, uh, you'll end up with some stitches at the end. So the last five stitches what I would do is uh, put them as uh, single crochets for three of them and then the last two as slip stitching. So but all I want you to do right now is just continually go around your basket until you get to about nine inches tall and that's from this spot up and what we're going to do from that point is that we're going to flip the edge in order to make the stuffing. So let's uh, continue to do that and I'll see you there in just a moment because this is miniature mine won't be so high but it would just be enough for demonstration purposes today. So eventually you're going to get to your nine inches tall. So then what I'd recommend once you're satisfied then just single crochet the next three. So one, two and three and then just slip stitch the next two. So through and through. So it's kind of a cheating waist but you don't end up with any slip stitching at all on the outside of it. If you're gonna look at a pet bed you might as well have fun with it. I want you to cut the string long enough so that you can sew the whole thing together. So just leave it extra long and then just pull that through. Now you're gonna wanna get your stuffing now involved and you want to begin with your tapestry needle. Getting all my tools here and what I want to do is that I want to use and get started. So I'm not gonna put the stuffing in right away. So I wanna fold it down towards the inside of here. Okay, so I'm just gonna go on the inside and go right down to the start. And this is gonna pull that down in and it's gonna form a tube. Okay, you don't quite see it yet. So what you wanna just do then is just go back. I'm just trying to find the right angle to show you and keep it convenient for me. So just going into the next stitch here, you should have the same stitch counts going all the way around and then just kind of like pop it forward so that you can see and all you're just trying to do is just grab some stitches to form that tube to happen. So once you get a good hold of it like I do now, um, now it's gonna become easier. So I just keep advancing the stitches around and then as I get about a quarter of a way what I want to do is start applying the stuffing. Now with the stuffing with this uh, rim area I did not want the stuffing to be too loose. I lightly padded the bottom area so that the cats will sink down into it but with the padding on the rim I wanna keep it somewhat firm so that they can rest their heads on the rim without it collapsing. So now that you get the gist what you're gonna wanna do is start now stuffing. So just using the pocket where you can access it on either side and just grab your stuffing and just start pushing it into that pocket that you're forming. Just using your fingers just to force it into that whole section. Now when you force it in you don't want it so crazy that you're, you're, you're popping out stuffing. So you want it firm but not to the point where it's causing the stitches to open up. 
Now because this is a miniature version I had more room with my hands to be able to move that in. So what I wanna do is continue now stuff as I go. So let me just grab some more stuffing off camera here. And I wanna stuff starting on this side as well. Now what I would be highly conscientious of is that it's very easy to catch these fibers of the stuffing into the stitch work and you don't want that. So when you're going to move things around with the, the needle just kind of force that polyfill down out of the way so that you don't capture it into position. Um, if you do capture it it's easy just to pull things out but um, like the fibers out of the stitches but um, it's kind of a pain. So I'm just doing it just to get it into position and I continually go all the way around. Okay, so pull nice and tight. Add more stuffing if you think you need to just to kind of force it in and that would be how you would do it. So once you're all done then this rim will stick up and then the cat will be able to go on the inside and once you're all done with that just fasten off this strand just tie it and then just weave it in and out of your work three times uh, in order to, to do that. So this would be how you would make one of these uh, padded rim cat nap beds. Um, I, my cats love these, like absolutely love these and I'm excited that they love them too. So now they got a bit of cushion from the floor. They got the pad to rest their heads up there and you will find that they will put their paws down in the creases that it will sink down. So once it's up you'll see that their paws will go down and then they feel really at home. So until next time, it's Mike on behalf of the Crochet Crowd. So with my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. This is how you make my own little pattern. We'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.